Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not. This is Iceland, at the very end of the Earth. It's here that a leap in economic evolution is taking place. It's a jump that's set to impact the life of every single human being. This rugged landscape is one of the places where blockchain technology is being used to transform the very way the world views money. Infrastructure that supports cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, calls this place home. I've come here to meet the people driving this innovation and see for myself how they're reshaping what's possible and, in the process, fueling one of the most profound opportunities since the early days of the Internet. This facility consists of more than 25,000 cards. If you put all the computing capacity and if you sum it up all together, there is more computing power than the world's number one supercomputer. This is the road leading to the Enigma Data Center, located just outside Reykjavik, Iceland's capital city. What's inside makes cryptocurrency and the underlying blockchain technology possible. I'm Marco Strang, the co-founder and CEO of Genesis Mining, which is, um, has become the largest cryptocurrency mining company in the world. We're in the middle of a gold rush. A German mathematician, Marco is the man who built the Enigma facility. He's leading a global revolution in finance via blockchain technology. His company, Genesis Mining, has over one million customers. Blockchain is my life. It's getting more and more clear that it will play a significant role in all of our lives. It's a fully transparent system. It's, uh, it's fully decentralized. You don't need any kind of uh, trusted element and you don't need a central uh, entity. The real genius of blockchain technology is its authenticity. It allows anyone to enter into a business transaction with someone else without needing to go through a trusted intermediary. The system itself verifies the transaction. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum are built on this technology. And in this sort of a world, banks aren't very important. But places like Enigma are. Enigma is a cryptocurrency mining farm. Genesis has several facilities just like this one around the world. Showing me around is Marco's right-hand man in Europe, Helmut Rauth, the director of Genesis Mining Iceland. These are quite some challenges in setting up mining farms, but um, with our experience and um, with the good help of, of, of our partners here in Iceland, it was possible. Every time someone uses a cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, to purchase something, these computer processors authenticate the transaction, something called mining. Miners are approving and validating the transaction and they are distributed among the globe. And that makes it decentralized and resilient to, to single points of failure in the system. In exchange for authenticating transactions, cryptocurrency miners are rewarded with tokens. Miners who validate the transactions get incentivized by getting the underlying cryptocurrency. So, for example, in Bitcoin, every day there is 1,800 Bitcoins that are generated for all the miners around the world. If you have, for example, 10% of the computing power, you get 10% of these 1,800 Bitcoins every day. All of this computing power generates a lot of heat and requires an enormous amount of electricity. And that's where places like Iceland come in. The climate is very stable. It's nice and cold. And with this stable climate, it's quite good to, to cool some megawatts of hardware, for example. And also, there's an economical aspect on that, because um, using geothermal um, electricity is definitely better for us than using nuclear power, for example. 
There's no financial asset in the world that's experienced the exponential growth in value that cryptocurrencies have. This is due to their potential and the potential of the underlying blockchain technology, which at this point seems almost limitless. The blockchain will disrupt nearly every industry, from purchasing groceries to heating your home. Everyone, from banking to government, is racing to develop the technology. I always compare it to the beginning of the internet because um, people realized that this is something big and then it ended uh, in the kind of dot-com bubble where it was completely insane and all those companies were overvalued. But we, we should never forget that from the ashes of the dot-com bubble, the biggest companies in the world arose. And uh, in the blockchain, we're seeing now, uh, in my opinion, I'm clearly seeing the, the, the analogy here. And Genesis Mining, since we were there from the beginning on, has the potential to be one of these giants. And we want to leverage on that. And it's my life to make, make this happen. A chance meeting in China with a Canadian tech expert would provide that leverage. Walking beside Marco is Olivier Rusi Newton, a Canadian tech entrepreneur who sold a self-made mobile gaming company in China just a year and a half out of high school. About a year and a half ago, I was in China on business and I bumped into some old pals. They were kind enough to invite me out to dinner in Shanghai that evening. It was sitting next to Marco Strang and uh, was quite interested in the mining operations and businesses that they set up. And, uh, we developed a friendship from there. That friendship has led to what is now one of the hottest publicly traded tech companies in the world. This is Vancouver, home base for natural resource and entertainment magnate Frank Chustra. He founded Goldcorp, a top global gold miner and Lionsgate, one of Hollywood's most successful film studios. Olivier made the introduction, introducing Marco to Mr. Justra. This introduction to Marco was very serendipitous for me because I knew very little about blockchain and very knew very little about cryptocurrencies. And at first I thought, well, you know, I, I, I'm, a I'm a traditionalist. You know, I'm going to buy my gold and put it, you know, wherever you put gold to make sure that it, it's, it's the protection, the ultimate protection against everything. But um, I was urged to look deeper into it, and I did. I, 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 I spent a lot of time reading about the cryptocurrencies and specifically about the blockchain technology and after a few months I was really amazed and like many times in my life I saw an opportunity. The opportunity has become Hive Blockchain Technologies, a public company listed on the TSX Venture Exchange. By combining the expertise of Marco's Genesis Mining with Mr. Juster's Fiori Group, Hive's goal is to build a global leader in crypto mining and establish a solid platform to launch other related businesses. We were the first in terms of being a public company, uh, raising enough capital to be a significant first mover. And I think we have ahead of ourselves something that is truly revolutionary. Genesis has already sold two data centers in Iceland, including Enigma, to Hive and Hive has the option to purchase three more. While in Sweden, Genesis is building a brand new, state-of-the-art facility on behalf of Hive. Genesis is Hive's largest shareholder, holding around 30% of the company, and will operate Hive's data centers moving forward. So Genesis and Hive's interests are aligned. This is San Antonio, Texas, a city with a massive U.S. military presence. It's also where Frank Holmes calls home. It's a multi, multi-billion dollar opportunity. Frank is the CEO of U.S. Global Investors, an award-winning investment advisor with nearly $3 billion under management. I think the biggest part is your first mover advantage and uh, can we do things intelligently? A close friend of Mr. Justra, he sees an unprecedented opportunity in cryptocurrencies and blockchain. He's the chairman of Hive. What's the business plan for Hive? How is the company going to make money? 
Well, it makes money by mining coins and uh, we'll sell 20% at the beginning uh, and we'll start creating a bank of coins. And then to diversify from Ethereum, uh, it'll go to Bitcoin and other coins so that we want to really understand how we monetize. And what's interesting is the volatility of these coins with a quant trader. It's very attractive. You can make a lot of money with it. And in media interviews, Frank hasn't been shy about saying how much money Hive will generate just within the next few months. By March, we expect to have 50 million in revenue, have cash flow pushed to 35 million, and have GNA basically is small, that we'll have free cash flow of 25 million. Well, guess what? That's worth a billion dollars in the capital markets. So what excites me also is Hive is gonna be like a royalty company high revenue per employee, high gross margins, uh, and this, I, this concept of first mover advantage as we acquire more building capacity, uh, diversify not just in Iceland, uh, diversify, we've been looking at other countries in Europe, but we have to have cheap electricity. That's very, very significant, and cheap long-term contracts for electricity. This is Switzerland, postcard nearly everywhere you look, it's also home to Crypto Valley, better known as the Canton of Zug. The Swiss government is building the world's leading blockchain and cryptographic technologies ecosystem, one designed to attract the best and the brightest talent and companies. Combined with some of the lowest corporate tax rates in the Western world, it's why Hive is opening an office here. An investment in Hive is different than owning just the underlying currency. The longtime director of Macquarie Capital Markets Canada, Hive CEO Harry Pokerant was an early adopter of Bitcoin, mining the cryptocurrency at his home. A creative thinker, he's not concerned about the volatility of cryptocurrency prices impacting Hive's bottom line. As prices fall even, other miners drop out of the business. So then what happens when prices fall is we actually end up gaining market share Although the, price is, uh, although the price is falling. So then we end up mining more coins as, as prices are falling. Um, and these other miners leave the business because they the can't business. afford to stay in it. Because because, yeah, because they're losing money. At that point in time, it's cheaper for them just to buy the underlying currency than it is to mine it themselves. Mm -hmm. But because we're, we're in one of the lowest cost jurisdictions in the world, you know, we will, we will be more likely profitable than, than, than the other miners in the rest of the world. So you have a very unique ability to make money under almost any scenario. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's not like the, the network can stop verifying transactions, right? So, so it'll find, uh, you know, it, you know it's, it's supply and demand. It'll find, find a level where, where, where mining has to happen. And, and being in that low-cost jurisdiction, then we will be we'll be the guys mining. Working alongside Harry and Frank to open the Zug office is Hive director, Toby Abel. For us, it's very important having partners here. A tax lawyer with extensive experience in the cryptocurrency space, he sees a wide open future. With Hive blockchain, the uh, opportunities lie not with the, uh, only with the growth of the cryptocurrencies, but with all use cases uh, combined of blockchain and of, uh, of cryptocurrencies. This game will evolve. It's not going to stay static. There's nothing static. It's a very dynamic process that's taking place here. And we just have to figure out how to stay relevant and part of what will be a technology that is not going to go away. Blockchain technology definitely isn't going away. But for some, there is a question mark casting a shadow over the future of cryptocurrencies. You know that there's a lot of fear out there about cryptocurrencies, and mainly it revolves around how governments are ultimately going to address this question. And the fear is, is that if the U.S. government decides to outlaw Bitcoin overnight, the crypto market dries up, and obviously it's going to impact you guys. What do you say to that argument? If the U.S. does say no more Bitcoin, it's too late. It's a decentralized mechanism, and countries like Japan, the third biggest GDP in the world, have accepted it. You know the big reason why Bitcoin, Ethereum exploded in the past year? It's because South Korea, consortium of banks all of a sudden started using it. Uh, Japan, uh, Singapore. It's true. Uh, the decentralized nature of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies make them impossible to shut down. And they do offer things of fundamental value, speed, security, 
and efficiency. But Hive is more than a cryptocurrency company. It's the world's first public company looking to leverage the power of blockchain technology to innovate in nearly every field imaginable. I always compare the space to the beginning of the internet because everyone knows by now that this space has huge potential and drives innovation, but we, we all cannot imagine how big it will be because a lot of things are still yet to be found, etc. And that's what a lot of people know. Uh, and that's why everyone is trying to position themselves in a way that they can leverage in the whole economy. Cryptocurrencies are reducing transaction costs, they're eliminating middlemen in third world countries. They've got the potential of eliminating corruption. The blockchain addresses all of these different issues. So, so the blockchain really rewards producers, good actors, and it punishes bad actors. The dot-com boom was in the few trillions and that was centralized to the U.S. So this is a global kind of phenomenon and I could see it be you know, going much bigger than that. And I think we're just at the, uh, the starting point, really. 10, 15 years from now, we're all going to look back and go, we were there at the beginnings of, of something that was revolutionary. Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not.